Okay, this is my next monthly update video. Um, sorry that it's late. Um, that instead of being done last month, it's being done now. Just been busy with everything because what's been going on lately. Um, the one thing is I've been trying to get issues resolved with my insurance. The prescription part of my insurance plus because pretty much the plan that because things were switched around at the beginning of the year and I wasn't notified so I had to have my plan re-switched to a different one that covers my prescriptions and yeah a whole mess there plus dealing with um, because it's not, because I've been planning a hand fasting ceremony. It's not like a legal wedding we're doing, but we're doing a hand fasting ceremony. So I've been busy with that. So, yeah, so that's been going on. Other than that. Um, all that stressors and a few other things that's been going on. But the thing is, right now, well, you're probably here to watch the video for it. What has been going on regarding my transition and whatnot, what these specific videos are about. Well, um, all I can say is, with my hormones where they're at, I'm still having my hormone cycle the same like it's been doing. It's still been going um, hormonally time of the month because I can't bleed, so I don't call it a period, but I have all the hormonal symptoms and it's all random how severe or how non-severe it is, but it's still lasting 10 days. I can't figure out what triggered them to start going 10 days in a row. But in the long run, it's actually been helping, I've noticed, with breast development and breast growth with the um, progesterone. And Part of the issue was with insurance was getting the progesterone covered in which I need for my health and for my breasts to finish growing and developing so that's part of the stressor was having getting that resolved and whatnot but they're still growing mostly instead of going up in size they're actually filling in still and in the mornings, I've been noticing they feel a lot fuller and heavier. It's like when I go to get up, I f actually feel the weight of them now. Like, feels like <sighs> two pounds on each side, like here and here, each breast. It's like that much weight. I act that's what it feels like. Um, And it's not comfortable. It's not the most, like, comfortable thing in the world as they're feeling in. But for the, like, the long run, I've been noticing it's still helping with my gender dysphoria. I can't explain why when my dysphoria went away from my breasts not being there or the correct size and fullness that went away a long time ago but it's still continuing to help with it and at this point how i've been feeling if they end up going smaller meaning my actual fullness and size if they end up going down in fullness or size it would cause a lot of dysphoria and it's just been feeling the right fullness, circumference, and whatnot for my body. 
even though I can still use some fullness to fill in up here on top. It's like the upper part up here. It's just, the rest of it's just amazing what I've been able to get and achieve so far because that was my biggest dysphoria out of all the dysphoria I had. The different forms that from my body, it came from my breasts not being where they should have been a long time ago. And hmm, compared to where they're at now, it's so much nicer and so much better. Um, other things that's been happening with my transition besides this becoming fuller and pretty much, if you can see, this is what they currently look like and I still measure 40 inches around. That means around, not on an angle but perfectly around the fullest part. Still measure 40 inches. My band size still hasn't changed from 32 and it makes me a 32H even though it doesn't look like it. That's what I fit in because that's what my circumference pretty much fits in mostly like demi style bras and I've been noticing balconettes because my fullness has gone to a point where balconettes are not fitting right anymore and demis are fitting even better so yeah I'm still measuring a 32H so it is what it is, but other than that, other parts of my transition. Some issues I wasn't, haven't been too happy about um, down there in the vaginal canal. On the right side, that nerve I mentioned before. Yeah, I was having pain at the very back of the canal all, all the way up to the labia. And with nerve issues like that, I was told with the doctors to do self-stimulation. So pretty much what they meaning by self-stimulation is using your hands and toys to stimulate the area to tell the nerve it's okay to be touched. So I decided to take out a toy. One that vibrates to get that nerve to calm down and not be painful. I ended up bleeding and because I took about an hour or so, however long it took, but I ended up bleeding and it wasn't a small amount of blood. It was a significant, but not bad enough to need to go to the doctor. Um, the bleeding stopped and um, the pain has subsided. So I was thinking part of it can be hormone related, the hormone cycle. And the other part, I was thinking there could have been something that broke open, that drained, that could have been part of it. Um. Yes, I still have that hair down in there. It's probably never going to go away. So, yeah. So just remember, if you have the surgery, you can still have hairs growing in places that you probably don't want. Um, so the more electrolysis you can get beforehand, the better. Meaning if you can do... Because it's about six to eight months is what's recommended but if you can do more than eight months because before your surgery it's like two weeks before your surgery you have to stop having electrolysis for the gender confirming surgery um the gender affirming surgery and so i suggest if you can get up to a year's worth it 
help prevent hairs. But people still end up having hairs. And that's common in trans women to have hairs in the vaginal canal. But the amount of hair is where it becomes concerning. It's like I have one hair that I was able to find and don't really have any others besides that one. So that hasn't been bothering me that much. So yeah, I just don't really notice it when I dilate or toys and whatnot or walking around in just daily life. I don't feel it. It's not causing any irritation or infections or anything. So, yeah, I just, if I'm able to, was told in the past to tweeze it, which is difficult because it's inside and it's hard to get to without the proper tools. So, yeah, but other than that, um, other things um, regarding my transition. Last time I weighed myself, I've been weighing 143.3 pounds, roughly around there. And before surgery, I was around 122 to 124, sometimes 126-ish the most then after the initial surgery I slowly gained to where I'm at and like I've said in the past what I've noticed I never thought I'd feel really good gaining to where I've gained because my original goal was 130 pounds to help benefit my transition and like mostly to help fill in my breasts and that breast health and development because they're not done filling in yet and they weren't back then it was just to help further up that but I've surpassed that goal and I feel normal it just it's weird because the way my body shape is the way I feel my whole body just feels normal like my like the tummy area how it's in the female range not like a female that's um really fit and that has muscle but just in a normal female range where it has that shape with more fat in the area and it just feels right and it feels good and I don't have those issues that I had before in the past with how I was feeling with my body because it's like it's weird because how some people are trying to lose weight but on my end I was trying to gain from my health to a certain point not like the unrealistic like weight gain but enough to be in the normal range for my height because my height is five seven and a half with scoliosis and kyphosis. If my spine was straighter, I'd probably be taller. But yeah. And I just feel really good. Other than that, um there hasn't been other much changes besides through here, I've just been noticing a little more fat. Other than that, um, the electrolysis I've been getting, the way she did the treatment this last time and the time before, because she did it the same way. This last treatment seems to have worked very, very well. Haven't noticed any of the hairs coming back just yet. So that's really good. Um, so I'm just waiting to see if I have any hairs. Then if any hairs come back, 
then I'll continue getting more electrolysis. Um, other than that, nothing else has been really going on or happening um, with any other aspects of my transition in life in general, besides what I've mentioned. Um, I'm just, besides some of the mental things I was going through, in general with my body and my health and where I'm at in my transition. I don't regret it. I always keep saying this because it's the truth. As a post-op trans woman, transgender woman that's been transitioning, that I've been transitioning since I was 22, that's when I started the physical part of my transition officially with the doctor. It was November 20th of 2010, up to now. I don't regret any of my transition. I'm the happiest I've ever been, and I'm the most comfortable I've ever been with my body. Especially with the mind-body connections and all the signals my body sends. How it all matches physically. And how I'm feel mentally and physically with everything where my body's at weight wise where my breasts are at how cute I look and just everything in between it feels right I don't regret it I'm the happiest I've ever been and this is just coming from my experience I can't speak on others and their transition and the reasons why they've transitioned and why others have some detransition for some reasons. I can't speak on anything but my own experiences. So, yeah. And that's why I do these videos from my perspective of the bodily changes and why I switch to doing a monthly video because it's taking at least a month to notice the changes I've been having. So, yeah, and what's been going on. So, other than that, I'm happy. Don't regret it. And if I can only change one thing about my whole transition, if I can change one thing, one thing would be starting it sooner. If I could have started it sooner, I would have physically started it sooner, even though a long time ago I kind of tried, but not having the right prescriptions or like the medicines I needed, I wasn't able to fully at that time in 2009 when I first tried unofficially with the doctor. But since being a, like officially st had started my transition with the doctor back in November 20th of 2010, um, up to now, it was worth it. It was so worth it. And if I could choose not to be trans, I wouldn't choose any other path because all my experiences and things that's happened in my life wouldn't have happened the way they've happened if I wasn't born transgender. So, so I wouldn't want to change a thing about that. The only thing is just starting my transition sooner. That's the only thing I would have liked to have done was start sooner than at the age of 23, but it was worth it through the journey and exploration of who I am as a person from everything from my sexuality, my sexual orientation, sexuality, my gender identity, 
trying to figure it all out. It was all worth it to be where I'm at now. Especially with having a loving, supportive partner that I have. I wouldn't change that for the world. So, yeah. I don't regret it. I'm happy. And until my next video, if you have any questions, please comment and I'll do my best to answer them. And until that next video, whenever that will be, um, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And until then, Boo! What do you do?